to my left is Karen Ray, our Deputy Secretary for Transportation. Karen, thank you very much for all your hands-on approach. Uh, we've met work many times before, uh, Major General Patrick Murphy from the New York State National Guard. And uh, to my right is John Melville, the Acting Commissioner for Homeland Security, and uh, Maria Lehman and other senior representatives from the New York State Thruway Authority. Uh, I'd also like to thank the State Police for their engagement and involvement with us every step of the way. And of particular note, today is National Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. And to uh, all of our friends and partners in law enforcement at every level, uh, we take a moment to thank you for your work to protect each and every one of us, uh, particularly in an event like this. I'd like to just say we are here at a place we gathered just, uh, it seems, a short time ago when the governor was very much hands-on during our last major snow event back in November. Uh, the good news is that we did not have a repeat scenario of seven feet of snow, but however, we will always remain vigilant and anticipate the worst. I think that's what we do best. We prepare for the worst and we're always happy when it doesn't occur. But a lot of that doesn't occur is because of the preparation from the people that are in this room and uh, who are still actively engaged. Because in fact, while it may be sunny outside, this event is not over. We've been in close contact with the National Weather Service, conference calls with them quite regularly. And uh, while we may take a, a little bit of solitude right now that it looks good at this moment, they anticipate that there's going to be a change in the weather conditions once again, particularly during the afternoon rush hour. We don't anticipate that necessarily to hit the urban area of the city of Buffalo, but we don't know for sure. So we're, we're anticipating uh, anything could happen. Uh, this was already quite a storm. We had over 600 closings between businesses and schools. That's a, a major snow event. We also want to remind people that it is dangerously cold outside. Uh, if you do not have to be out there, do not go. We've already had a tragedy. We also want to make sure that people remain safe and secure off the roads if at all possible. And we'll be discussing momentarily our situation with the roads in the western New York area because that's been a, a topic of major conversation with the experts we have gathered here today. But again, our, our philosophy is to better safe than sorry. Uh, I'd like to report that in the last hour or so, we've, re we've opened some uh, with some of the major arterials from to the north and the east of the city. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we could deal with the influx of truck traffic that have been bottled up since yesterday. Again, that was a major precaution uh, that the experts around us have determined was important to make sure that we don't get into the same situation that we had the last, last couple months when uh, the truck traffic was allowed on a highway and we have that very unfortunate circumstance of a jackknife situation which affected uh, the flow of traffic very adversely as you all, all recall. So we understood the need to keep the truck traffic off the roads and that's why there was a shutdown of the New York State of Thruway when it occurred yesterday. Uh, so right now uh, we, we can have a conversation about this but the 190 is now opened in both directions between Henrietta and the 190. Uh, we've been informed by the Weather Service that that area we expect will remain clear uh, again, subject to change, so be vigilant. We're monitoring it closely, but at, based on the best information we have right now is that those areas will remain open. Uh, we also want to make sure we'll know that the 190 is open in both directions, with the exception of the Skyway. Uh, we're concerned about the, uh, uh, with the inbound for the Skyway and the outbound. We're going to be talking about that, but we still have we've been in contact with our partners and all the municipalities and they have reported that there's still dangerous conditions on the roads to the south. Um, blowing conditions, the snow is accumulated. We want to make sure that people are safe as they're going out on the Furman Boulevard in particular because you have the lake right there. Uh, and as a former resident of the town of Hamburg, I can speak with first-hand experience of how treacherous that can be uh, in, when these conditions, even when it's not snowing at the moment, the conditions are such that the blowing can make uh, limited or zero visibility, and that's of concern to us. So uh, we will be having open again the 190 in both directions, Henrietta to 190. Uh, the, we will be having the 290 ramps are now reopened. We'll talk about mm -hmm. that. And uh, Route 5 eastbound direction inbound. Uh, we're still expecting heavy accumulation this evening. And that is still why we're going to remain vigilant. And we have <coughs> remained, uh, certain roadways are going to remain closed. And that would be the 190 in both directions from exit 53, which is where the 190 hits the freeway, to the Pennsylvania border. Again, conditions there have not abated, and we anticipate that they're going to even worsen in the next few hours. And the south down ramp on the uh, 190 to, to the 90 is going to remain closed. Uh, other roads that we believe need to remain closed, the 219, uh, particularly uh, from the uh, southern, from uh, 
192 Springville. We've been in contact with the leaders in Concord and they've reported that they're still blowing conditions there, uh, creating uh, uh, very unsafe conditions. Route 400, the Aurora Expressway, northbound and southbound between the 90 and Route 16, and Route 5 outbound between the 190 and Ridge Road. Those re need to remain closed for the time being, but we encourage all listeners, uh, people to make sure that they tune into their news organizations and uh, we'll be giving ongoing reports as that condition develops. Again, we'd love to have uh, things back to normal as soon as possible. We just can't control Mother Nature, but our priority number one is the safety of our community, the public, and that's why, uh, the, and the best judgment of the people here, and the governor, who is monitoring this very closely from Albany, who's been in touch with us all throughout the day, who's very concerned and, uh, and uh, would have been here except for weather conditions detained him from being here, but he's asked me to uh, assist in this effort, and I want to thank the individuals at this table. But I do want to get a report on how those openings went, <coughs> uh, what steps we took to get the truck traffic going right away, and uh, Karen, if you want to answer that question, and uh, give some explanation of how the rollout occurred, and. and how it's going. Um, thank you very much and again to everybody who's been working here for the last 36 hours in preparation for the storm and we'll work for another 36 until we're past it. Um, we did decide to act proactively. I think it's really important because part of the reason we're able to open up what was just announced recently is because instead of having a lot of motorists stranded in freezing weather and truckers jackknifing, we decided last night in consultation with the state police our partners at OEM, the Thruway, and DOT, the, and the governor clearly stepped in and said, we want to be as proactive as we can while still maintaining as much movement as we could in the area. So the idea of moving to a nine o'clock ban on the Thruway for trucks and on similar highways that paralleled them because we didn't want to shove them into side communities began at nine. The total shutdown of the Thruway um, was at midnight last night. I want to say that we got off at 11.59 at exit 49 to make sure that I was not <laughs> missing the band time. But as we did that, we saw an amazing reduction in traffic. Our crews were able to get out, work through the night, and through the snow squalls. In fact, although we only had some places four or five inches of snow, we removed that same four or five inches several times over. So it wasn't until this morning and the bands moving from Niagara County south that we were able to finally determine that the roads leading north and east were safe to be used again and we began a very systematic approach to reopening those. Those were reopened around a little bit before one and into one o'clock today. Um, and we can talk in more detail about that. We have our experts that actually manage that rollout but I think the key message is right now we are returning traffic in those areas, but we are not returning traffic, as you mentioned, Governor, south of Buffalo, where they're still expecting three to four feet of snow possibly, and sometimes three inches plus an hour, which is past our tipping point. Our tipping point's about two inches an hour where our plows can keep up with it. And again, this isn't as much snow, but the whiteout conditions and the extreme cold conditions caused the governor to be very alarmed and concerned about the personal safety of everyone commuting our roads. So we're very glad we did that. I believe after watching previous storms, we would not be reopening right now. We'd be digging tractor trailers out and we'd be pulling people out of their cars and it would be several more hours before we could open. So we believe this was prudent and it actually led to a quicker return of service of those highways. So if you'd like a little more information, I'm sure that some of the folks that have okay. been here on the ground can jump in and give you more specifics. Um, Maria, maybe you want to talk just quickly about how the last two hours have unrolled so that we could reopen everything safely with the state police up to the side. Sure, thank you. Um, it, it's complicated to close a roadway that, uh, that has, uh, we had 69 closure points to be able to do what we had to do over the last couple days. Um, which includes 11 gates and the toll barriers, but there's 41 places, physical places, that had to be closed um, and then reopened, and reopened um, in a series so that we did not cause a safety problem either for the motorists or for uh, the state employees and our various partners. Um, that included the Thruway Authority, the DOT, the National Guard, um, the New York State Police, Buffalo Fire, the Peace Bridge, West Seneca Police, Hamber or, uh, Tonawanda Police, and Amherst Police. Um, so it took us um, about 
40 minutes um, to put all of those pieces in place to be able to go one at a time when we closed. Um, and we opened uh, in about 18 minutes uh, based on having all the resources in place at the time and then going um, area by area to make sure that we did not have any issues. Uh, we were not sure how we were going to reopen based on what happened with the weather. Um, so we had a plan for up to five phases of different roads that could come online as quickly as possible. But as the conditions improved and we had some confidence that we aren't going to come up um, past exit 53, we decided to take that all and do it all at once. And um, it's a symphony. Um, and it came off pretty well considering how many players we had. Uh, we've, we've been having calls probably every three or four hours um, with upwards of a hundred different policing agencies and emergency services in state and federal and local government. Um, I don't know that, uh, that we could have pulled it off any better than we did, quite frankly, based on the cooperation we got from everyone. So thank you. And we also have the electronic warning system throughout the New York State system so they can anticipate what will happen if they do come to this area. So they will be blocked basically from if someone wants to go further west than Buffalo, they will know that they need to take alternative routes if they're coming from Syracuse, Rochester, Albany, correct? correct. There's different signage depending on where you are So because there's alternate routes. Um, we're telling trucks that are Pennsylvania bound um, coming westbound on the throughway um, to take 81 to 86 and, uh, and for that, we have to work with our partners also with PennDOT and Ohio uh, DOT. So again, lots of partners in trying to get this done. Okay. So basically, to be clear and reiterate, the, the entire 190 around the city of Buffalo has reopened with the exception of the access to the Skyway. Correct. And the throughway from Henrietta all the way up to exit 53, which is at the Buffalo boundary in a connection with 190, is also going to be open in both directions. Correct. And, and okay, we can maintain that as long as the weather holds, and we anticipate that it will. Um, but again, we ask people to be very vigilant in monitoring the news stations and watching so they know if there is a change of events. We do not want to see anyone stranded on these highways. We are very pleased with the outcome in this particular snow event because, again, the proactive nature of the response of the involvement of people around this table and our partners, that that has not occurred, but this event is not over. So if you're anticipating, think you're going to go out, know that you could be at risk. Uh, again, weather conditions change rapidly, and blowing conditions, uh, lake effect, you have thunder, snows, you have everything going on here. And so this is just not a good time to travel. It's a good time to uh, watch a movie on TV, get some popcorn, and snuggle up with your family. So uh, that's my recommendation. Any questions or anybody else around the table have anything to add to the conversation and make sure people feel they have all the information they need? Okay. I'm good. Okay. All right. Michael? Lieutenant Governor, one clarification. Is the, are these roadways now open to everyone? Because before we were told it was essential travel only. Are all these roadways, the 190, the 290, the portion of the 90 you discussed, open to everyone? Yes, they are. And there was some consideration of uh, keeping trucks off for a while, but we understand we've been monitoring this and some of the roads are just absolutely dry. I mean, there's been a lot of work to get them salted in the right condition. And while there's this very good window, uh, where it's clear we encourage people if they need to travel, if they have to travel, uh, now is your opportunity. And we anticipate based on current weather forecasts, uh, which is our qualifier, based on current weather forecasts, that they should be able to remain open to all traffic. There are portions of these roadways, I think of the 290 in particular, that hasn't had snow in more than six hours. We've seen dry pavement on these traffic cams for six hours or longer. Why did it take so long to reopen some of these roadways? Because they all connect to a larger system. Uh, there are parts of the New York State Thruway Authority which are impassable, which would be dangerous for people to travel on. So what happens is if you open up one portion, but the people cannot travel any further south or west, uh, they have the possibility of getting stranded, and that's a situation we do not want to see. In downtown Buffalo, um, actually right next to our station, we saw a lot of tractor trailers lined up all the way down Church Street and Niagara. And we actually got a phone call from the Sheriff's Department that they weren't able to get um, some of their inmates in and out um, of some areas around there. What, what consideration was taken for those trucks that were actually now on city streets right. clogging up those areas? Right, we are aware of that situation and we believe it's significantly less than it had been in the past and we, uh, we took a, a measured decision to say that it's safer to have those trucks off of New York State Thruway or off the 190 
than it is where they could be jackknifed and block thousands of motorists and put people's lives in jeopardy. It's better that they be stationary mm -hmm. until we say the roads are, are safe to reopen again. Uh, Governor, this is a 10-inch uh, snowstorm, and it's kind of a different reaction from the whole mechanism of state government to a 10-inch snowstorm. Mm -hmm. That's okay, but do you have to balance that against the need to keep the freeway open and to keep trucks moving and business going and all that? How do you, how do you come to that? I think you look at it from past experiences. Uh, a lot of lessons were learned in the last event where people would say that perhaps uh, it should have occurred earlier, the closing. So we are very sensitive to that. Again, you say it's 10 inches now, but they were forecast to be two to three inches an hour. And if that had continued, we would have been in a dire situation had we not been smart enough to use the expert, the collective wisdom around this table from the last experiences and put that to best use. So people, we ask them to rely on our best judgment based on past experiences. And our best judgment is it's better to keep people safe and not run the risk that we could have another situation where there's uh, children, families, individuals stranded because we decided that, hey, it doesn't look that bad, we're going to let you go out there. We feel very comfortable about the outcome of this particular event, at least so far. Uh, it's not over. Uh, we're not going to say it's a uh, declare a victory yet until this, this event has passed, but I like where we are today. I like where we are in contrast to where we had been uh, a couple months ago, and a lot of that is, again, uh, subscribing to the uh, the mantra, better safe than sorry. And Bob, I think the other thing is we've worked closely with the Motor Truck Association. Um, and one of the things they asked us, as well as the locals asked us, is to give them plenty of advance notice. Don't just give us an hour's notice. Rochester, the Pennsylvania border is a three hour trip. So if you'll notice, we took great pains working with all of our partners, local police enforcement, OEMs, as well as the Truckers Association to give adequate time for those folks to clear, choose another path, and then be able to move on their trips should they choose to. That's why we're intercepting in Albany and intercepting in Syracuse even now, so they don't get here and get stuck waiting to go to the South Towns until that storm has passed. So that's one of the things the Motor Truck Association has asked us for. It's one that the locals have asked us for, which is as much time as we have to prepare. The more time we have, the better. And I think that response is borne out in this particular event. Ms. Ray, we talked to the Truckers Association today. They're not happy in the fact that the roads remain closed as long as they did. There were hundreds of truckers stuck on the Canadian side who couldn't get in, hundreds stuck in Erie who couldn't get on. And they look at the cameras, and I'm kind of reiterating what I said to Lieutenant Governor, and for many hours they've seen dry pavement and blue skies. Why? Can't you open the 290, portions of the 190, portions of the throughway from here to Rochester? Why couldn't that have been open hours ago? Two things. It is the system, as the governor said. But on top of that, we have recurring problems. And I'd like to say it's not the majority of truckers. It's not 90% that belong to the Motor Truck Association. <coughs> it's the 5% that decide they're going to jump a line and leave people stranded for an extra five hours or jackknife on our roads. So letting them into any condition that has not been cleared as a system, because these people are not driving 10 miles to see to the grocery store, they're driving hundreds of miles, is just a risk that has borne time and time again. We had three jackknife tra tractor trailers on the throughway before we shut down yesterday. Fortunately, they were spread out a little more than the time before, but if they had been, if that had happened at midnight, or even if it had happened at three o'clock this morning, we would have been still digging out like we were last storm and not moving all the traffic back at regular speed at the time it is now. So it's a risk reward, and we believe that we erred on the proper side of the risk reward. Got the yeah, Governor, you talked about um, a tragedy that had already happened, right, as this press conference started. You said we've already had a tragedy. Just I was referring to the homeless individual who I understand from news accounts passed away during the night. Governor, Buffalo is known now, as you know, um, closing through ways, taking this approach now 12, 13 hours out. Is that part of the new normal? I mean, should, should residents expect to see more of this? I think the extreme weather is the new normal, first of all. Um, you talk about uh, what we've seen in the state just on the past four years of under of Governor Cuomo. There have been more natural disaster declarations under his tenure than there have been probably in the previous 20, 30 years. So we are preparing for the worst at all times now. And this whole concept of uh, uh, just waiting until 
circumstances become so dire and then you jump in, we're not going there anymore. That is not going to be how, that's not our playbook. We are going to be much more proactive and preventative. And uh, we don't want to inconvenience anybody. We understand the frustration of people want to get from uh, point A to point B. But I like the fact that those people are going to make it home tonight and they're going to sleep in their own beds and not on the New York State Thruway. So that's what this effort is all about. It's about learning from past episodes and experiences and applying that knowledge and just saying to people, we ask also all of you to use good judgment that when you're looking out the window, it may look fine, but where are you going? And what is the system doing? And can that sift system shift quickly and cause you to be trapped? And we look at this holistically. We look at the entire system and we ask people to, uh, we apologize for the inconvenience, but I want to make sure and the governor wants to make sure that everybody in this community is safe um, when the weather events occur. Denise? At what time was the decision made to reopen? And then after that point, how long does it take to reopen? Because you talked about having to remove physical barriers and things like that. Right, that's a good question, Denise. So Maria can answer that because she was hands on into uh, the how exact, I asked the same reopen? question. <laughs> how long does it take to reopen? Um, it really depends on the extent of, of what we had to close and how the interchanges work. Um, you know, just opening a toll barrier is, is a fairly quick response um, but in some cases we had gates and gates that um, maybe the throughway had keys that they gave to a different policing agency in some cases we had barrels in some cases we had police vehicles um, so you know originally we had hoped we could do this within an hour and you know we did a lot better than that and uh, I think that's just because we you know had these coordinated calls on a very regular basis so what time was the call made to reopen? And then from that time, what time was it actually reopened? Um, the call was made um, a few minutes before 1 o'clock, and it was about 1.16 that we got the all call back that each individual location had physically removed um, cones, barrels, barriers, police cars, volunteer fire cars, mm -hmm. uh, the whole combination. And who made the call to actually All to via radio. So it was the individual um, locations um, came into the Traffic Operations Center um, and told us so that we could make sure that we checked off of our list that they were all done. I'm sorry, who made the, who made the final call that it was okay to reopen the through? I think that was a Unified Command Commission uh, decision based on um, the South Towns Police. I, you know, there was a whole group of people. and. Uh, it was a unified command decision so that we were not creating a problem somewhere else. And one I also more question, like guys, and we're going to have to wrap this up because we've got to get back to working here. Okay. I'd like to just also add that the whole idea of having the barriers, uh, that's relatively new to the system. You know, the 11 barriers plus also the knowledge and acknowledgement that we also have to have people physically on hand to barricade people from entering the throughway. Because what we saw, I recall vividly as county clerk back in December of 2010, uh, I think it was December 3rd or 4th, when people were stranded on the three at that time, uh, we convened people to talk about it afterward and say, what happened here? And there was no effective way to barricade people from getting on the New York State Thruway at various points. We say it's closed, but people still were getting on, and that's when we had a disaster. So now we have uh, the infrastructure in place, uh, not just physically the barriers, but also the personnel that's ready to activate on a dime when we need them to shut it down, but also to reopen as quickly as possible. The storm is expected to get worse around uh, the commute time at three o'clock. I know that everything's open now to everyone. Um, are you expecting any further closures uh, and how will that? I'd like to correct that not everything is open now. I mean, we have still kept the areas where we anticipate the highest risk of bad weather occurring. And that would be from the, uh, the Pennsylvania border all the way up to exit 53 here in Buffalo and all the major roads, in the, in 219, for example, uh, and Route 5. There's a lot of roads that are remaining closed in the area which we think is the most vulnerable right now. So it's, if you're north of the city, you're lucky again. Uh, but people who live south of the city is where we anticipate the problems. So we have to get back to work shortly because uh, uh, we're anticipating problems starting up there again very shortly. But uh, thank you all for Thanks, helping everybody. us get the thank word you, out. Governor. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.